Good afternoon, Paul and Bhargav. It's Wednesday, the 28th of June. Here's the heads of brief for today. For the Southeast Asia production, we covered 22 issues. In North Asia, we covered 10. And for Australasia and the Pacific Islands, we covered eight. In South Asia, we covered 21 issues, plus the major issues in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Okay, great. Well, I'm obviously fresh back from travels, so I'm looking forward to uh, this brief. I haven't been around for a couple of days online. Thank you. Go ahead. Great. Well, so in Papua New Guinea, authorities extended the curfew in West New Britain for six more months uh, due to the increase in criminality, unrest, and riots after a prison break in April. Okay, thanks. Also in Papua New Guinea, uh, the Attorney General and the Minister for Independence Mission Implementation accused the national government of making the independence process difficult for the autonomous Bougainville government. But that's interesting, of course. The first issue, West New Britain, apart from a couple of NGO clients having a minor presence there, it's not a significant thing, especially for most of our corporate clients. The Bougainville matter is a different one. Obviously, the whole reason of for the autonomy spun out of the closure and the resource abuse and the lack of respect for the Bougainvillians by the by both the PNG government and by Australia and its Rio Tinto management at the time. I fear that if this continues to be delayed, it, it may indicate the PNG is trying to get its claws back into into that uh, mining concession. Although probably it may have non-Australian partners a second time around. Um, we need to keep a real close eye on that. Obviously, Sam Kayona was my senior classmate at Gorty Jungle Warfare School, and he made PNG government security forces look what they are, and that's fairly Mickey Mouse because the PNG government fails to govern. It fails to allocate resources. It fails to act prudently, professionally. It was even warned by its acting head of defence that if you go into Bougainville, you're going to get obliterated by Sam Kayona because the Bougainvillians under Sam Karen meant business and delivered it, unlike the executives that wanted the money but didn't want to actually have the professional outside. We just see too often resource companies managed from Australia and London thinking that Excel spreadsheets and expense accounts in Tier 1 cities gives you the expertise to manage in PNG. And, of course, they only ever realise uh, the arrogance and ineptitude after they have massive failures, but of course they then get promoted. So it's not a admission of um, liability for appointing um, arrogant, entitled, delusional baboons. And we're seeing it at so many times, Australia's resource sectors living in cities, Adelaide, Perth, blowing up caves, managing PNG like they're managing a a private boys club in Adelaide, it's always doomed with a disaster. They surround themselves with equally um, delusional nincompoops to tell them what they want to hear and then and then run away upon promotion when it all implodes. So keep really close on this because this is going to be a, a big issue in PNG. It's desperate for resources. It's not making the decisions to enable foreign entities to operate. It doesn't have local capital and expertise so this is a real concern. Thank you. Great. We'll keep a close eye on this, Paul. Meanwhile, in Papua in Indonesia, the West Papua National Liberation Army renewed their threats to kill the kidnapped pilot from New Zealand, Philip Mertens, in a statement released yesterday. Uh, there hasn't been much update on the situation. The military is still saying that it's seeking peaceful negotiations. Look, and I mean, let's face it, after how many months is it? Is it now? We're into the fifth month. I mean, the only people that have consistently been operating well in this is, is you know, basically a group of armed criminals in the TPNPB. Make no bones about it, though, as a nutter, um, Egyanis Kagoya does come from a long line of Kagoyas that were very um, committed in the OPM, though a lot more capable and competent than Egyanis from a military perspective, but what I do fear is what our initial assessment was from the outset, and that is there's just too many groups and a lack of command and control and a lack of training and a lack of commitment. And the police and the military in Indonesia, what they excel at 
he's doing business to replace the revenues that they don't get from the government. And it's very hard to be a professional outfit if your commanders are actually funding their own their own um, security capabilities and they become more focused on enterprise than actually delivering of security. Throw into that just a myriad of delusional commanders and way too much complexity in the cultures and the number of types of different security forces that are involved. And you've got a recipe for what this has been. And there can be no other way to describe this from an analysis of security capacity for Indonesia as complete and utter useless disaster. Thank you. Great. In Thailand, uh, regarding the political uncertainty after the elections, the Thai party has reiterated their demand that the House Speaker position must be from their party. They also are openly demanding 14 cabinet seats. Right now, there are concerns that the coalition will break because a meeting for today between the Move Forward Party and the Thai Party to resolve the House Speaker issue has been postponed indefinitely. And an eight-party coalition meeting between them tomorrow has also been postponed. Okay, look, this is of grave concern. I mean, a lot of Western pundits and various political analysts were, were overly optimistic when the Move Forward Party saw such a slide towards pro-change. But as we've been indicating for months leading up to the election, that any involvement from Tucson, and of course Tucson's the man behind the PTP, and the Tucson family with his daughter um, heading their nomination, was always going to be a recipe for disaster. The Move Forward Party electing to engage with the Thai Party um, missed a couple of key points. One is Taxon's, the established party's chief enemy number one. And secondly, that Taxon's always going to do what a sociopath does, and that's what's best for himself. So the fact that they're going into prolonged negotiations is, is proving the point that Taxon and the Thai Party is about Taxon. It's not about the public. Um, it represents itself as after the poor man, but it's the it's the most rich person in Thailand representing the poor man only to get a poor man's vote so that they can manipulate it and use it for their own wealth gain. But this is playing to the establishment's hands because they may, they may not need to play the card that you elected to have shareholdings in a media against the election rules so we disband you. And if they don't have to disband you because they can't form a coalition, it begs the, the question, is there an alternate uh, coalition or a minority government forming behind the scenes? Or they... Yes, Paul. So right now, they're, right now, parties are waiting to see whether this coalition implodes, which is looking likely. And there's now rumors circulating that the Bunja Thai Party could unite with the Pua Thai Party and possibly with the Palang Pracharat Party. So that's the main rumors going on right now, but everyone's just waiting to see what happens and move forward. As okay, well, excellent. Soon. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Now, look, I'm gonna zip up to uh, Thailand and have a couple of uh, behind the scenes interviews on um, next week, mid next week. And do you think at this stage we're going to escape some civil unrest, political unrest for the foreseeable weeks, or do you think it is imminent, depending on how the establishment perform in terms of whether they disqualify Kun Peter, the leader of the Move Forward Party? Well, I would say that it is very likely because uh, there have been calls to expedite the investigations against uh, Peter's media shareholding scandal. And today, a senator will be meeting the chairman of the election commission to inquire about the progress of this. Meanwhile, the Constitutional Court has also requested an update from the Attorney General uh, against the party concerning the party's policy to amend the less majeste law, which they say is a threat to Thailand. So there's also another attempt to block the move forward party from government. Okay, great, great synopsis. Thank you. Cheers. Great. Uh, moving over to South Asia, in Bangladesh, the opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party has uh, announced several protests over the coming months after Eid. These are likely okay. to turn violence. 
Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, the protests are likely to turn violent and more such protests uh, are are expected from other political parties. There is an element of anti-incumbency in Bangladesh with growing uh, criticism of uh, the Awami League-led uh, government. But uh, the important thing to note here is the leadership among the opposition party, especially BNP, uh, is nowhere to be seen. The chairperson of BNP is uh, Khalida Zia, who is in and out of hospital. Her son, a convict, in multiple cases, uh, resides in uh, London suburbs. So uh, there is no clarity over the leadership within the opposition parties. But we'll keep a close eye on uh, similar disruptions which may occur uh, in the meantime. Yep, we'll do that. In Pakistan, uh, authorities arrested nine terrorists from various groups in Punjab province. Uh, this comes as authorities are concerned over the possibility of terror attacks over this Eid period. All right, thank you. And in India and in Manipur, uh, security forces have seized weapon caches being smuggled from Nagaland to Manipur. And uh, they've also received information that militant groups in Manipur are receiving weapons from across the border with Myanmar also. Yes, the cross-border smuggling across the border between India and Myanmar has been a major issue for the Indian security forces in the northeastern region. Uh, Indian forces have conducted cross-border strikes in Myanmar uh, in 2015-16, and uh, the insurgent groups in the, no in the northeastern region are interlinked, and they have deep links with, uh, with some of the insurgent groups and ethnic armed uh, rebels in Myanmar as well. So we'll have to keep a close eye on uh, similar activities. If, the, if there's an increase in smuggling, we can expect more attacks in states, including Manipur, Nagaland, and Assam. Right. Uh, moving over to Europe, Middle East, and Africa, the United States yesterday announced more military aid for war, uh, for Ukraine worth 500 million U.S. dollars. This is for armored personnel carriers and fighting vehicles that Ukrainian forces can use in ground assaults. All right, thank you. With regards to uh, Russia and the recent Wagner Group uh, rebellion, the Russian government is taking more steps to pull the Wagner Group under its command, uh, stating that it has funding from the Russian state. It will also investigate the group's finances. Uh, it's high time that uh, private military corporations like Wagner Group are, bro are brought under the direct control of the governments, especially in Russia. Now, uh, we saw what happened with, uh, with Wagner Group. Uh, so uh, I would expect more such curbs and regulations around the group. Right. And in Israel, uh, organizers of the protests against the controversial judicial reforms said that civil disobedience activities will be held daily from the 3rd of July. On the 3rd of July, they will block uh, the international airport in Tel Aviv. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government is expected to enact the reforms by the 31st of July. All right. Uh, thank you. Nothing further from my end. Um, just from me all day, could you please have somebody over? It's not urgent, but I'm working on an assessment piece. It would be good to see the arrested suspects in Punjab just mapped out and also the border issue between India and Myanmar, if we could actually just map those events out. Um, I don't need it urgently. By the end of this week or Monday would, would meet my requirements, okay? Sure, Paul, we'll do that. We're also working Excellent. on an assessment for the money for violence, which will be out by the end of the week. Okay. Excellent. So look, just make that mapping uh, Monday, Monday night. It'd be fine. Great, yeah. great brief. Sure.